Okay, let's all just take a breath here. We all want to protect people from the Ashta. We're on the same side here. Mm-mm, the hell with that. This ain't the way things are done, and that's the end of it. With due respect, I have repeatedly explained that I do not need permission. I, I came to you in the spirit of cooperation, but if this is the reaction... Always! Why are you trying to fix something that ain't broke? Mr. Wilson. We can deal with the ash to better and safer. We didn't turn down fire or th th space flight because we'd managed just fine until that point. I will not be talked down to like this. Okay. Miss Alpin, please don't take any further action until we've had some time to think this over. Alright? We need to be smarter better in the way we handle the Ashta. Friend, I gotta confess, I'm not much in the mood for conversation. I know, I shouldn't let that woman get up under my skin, but, well, I can't seem to help it. Girl comes in here with her big ideas about how we defend our city, no respect for the way we've done things for years. No worries about the possible consequences and expect us to thank her for making our lives more difficult. I tell you, I've never seen entitlement like that. I assure you, it is not. Look, this ain't New Atlantis. It ain't all flowers and chirping birds out there. These walls around us, they're here for a damn good reason. I've trained the guards here for years, again, for a damn good reason. We get it wrong, we not watching all the time, then the ash to kill innocent people. That's the simple reality of the situation. So when someone struts into town with their untested ideas on how to do things better than those of us who dedicated our lives to protecting the city, that don't go over so well. I don't know, some technical mumbo-jumbo about sensors and behavior predictions. That's not the point. She expect us to just change up how things work and I can't abide by it. We've gotten along just fine until now. This ain't help. This is thinking you know better than the people that have done it for years. Decades even. It's just arrogance. Look. This is getting my blood pressure up talking about this so damn much. You think you can talk some sense into her? Be my guest. Otherwise, I suggest you leave defending this city to the people who spent their lives doing it. Well, you sure don't look like you're delivering the capacitors I'm waiting for. Something I can do for you? No, you misunderstand, I think. I placed the order last week. I'm just waiting for it to actually show up. So, did you need something, or...? Uh, no. That's not really accurate. It is, however, slightly less openly hostile a reaction than I've gotten around here, so I'll take it. I'm not sure what you've heard, or quite frankly, why this seems to be getting around the way it is. Despite assertions to the contrary, I'm not attempting to run anyone out of a job or open the city gates to allow Ashta to come pouring in. Nor am I in any way attempting to make a statement about the competence of the current security forces and or apparatus in Aquila City. I hope that clears things up. Fantastic. I just... I need to prove that what I'm working on can make a positive difference. Then you'll see it my way. I could really use some help, in fact, just to make sure this all goes off without a hitch. Would you be willing to place some sensors for me? Yeah, I need them to start gathering data. Pretty simple, I could do it myself, but at this point I think Davis may be having someone tail me. He's that flustered. That is great news. Just take these and stick them in specific spots in the city along the wall. When you're done, come find me. I'll find something to do in the meantime to give myself an air of plausible deniability.
Running the low house is tough. But there's times when we make a real difference. It makes it all with it. You got some good news, I hope? Well, that's that then. So, this next part, it's a bit delicate. See that guard tower across the way there? I need to get in there and make a few small modifications to the terminal inside. I don't have the processing power to collate all the data that'll be coming in from the sensors. The existing network does. Oh goodness, I really am bad at communicating sometimes. I have that part well in hand. The, uh, guard standing outside there, he's not gonna let me in. I need you to distract him. I should only need a few moments. So, I, I don't know, convince him to take a break or something. Or if you're feeling particularly rebellious, maybe give him some official business to attend to. I believe it's what Davis would refer to as a ruckus. As soon as you've got him occupied, I'll scoot in and out before anyone notices. Okay? Let's do this. What brings you to the wall? Boredom? Because if that's what you're looking for, you've hit the jackpot. And I'm just supposed to take this on what? Faith? Oh yeah? Everyone? I... I guess I believe you. Just don't do anything I'll regret, okay? I'm telling you. Ecologies are living things. They move, they change. The way we handle Ashta works for now. So we have to be prepared. That's all settled then. Thanks for the assist. Hope you're none too worse for wear. Oh, I intend to. Once enough data has been collected, I'll have the proof I need to convince them, especially Davis, that my technology is useful. If you're curious, come back tomorrow. I might even have preliminary findings. If you want to purchase anything, just... Or if you have the real Oh, it's you. I got the data from the seismic sensors. And I... I, I need help. Nothing that would get you in trouble this time. Promise. I need someone to go talk to Davis Wilson. He isn't speaking to me. None of the security folks are, actually. Oh, thank you. It's really nice to hear that when others just don't seem to care. Remember the sensors you helped me set up around the city? Well, Davis Wilson is pretty angry about it. I suppose I should have expected that, but now no one involved with security is willing to talk to me. At all. And I really need to coordinate with them because the data I'm getting from the sensors is, well, it's off. Not what I expected at all. Kinda everything. The timing of the results, the strength of the signals. I did a lot of research on the Ashta before I started this project, and none of it lines up like it should. No, the tech is fine. I never would have put it out there if I had any reservations about that. Look, I know I screwed up here. I went behind Davis's back and did what he told me not to. I don't expect him to talk to me. But this, I'm not gonna lie. It looks an awful lot like someone has been purposely messing with the system. I can't just stroll up and accuse him of anything, but maybe someone, you I'm thinking, could just ask around, see if something's going on. I'd really appreciate it. Don't mean to be rude, but I got a lot of things on my plate right now. So unless this is important, I'm gonna have to ask you to come back some other time. 
Oh, did you now? And did that perhaps come from a certain entitled so-called inventor who's caused me no end of headaches? Right, of course you are. Well then, concerned citizen, there have been some unpleasant developments of late. I'm not gonna name names, but you and I both know damn well who to thank. She made my life a lot more difficult, but I don't have time to deal with that right now. I have more important things to worry about. Been tracking Ashta for a long time now, and suddenly their behavior doesn't add up. Probably not a coincidence. That... That makes sense. Something's got him riled up. Now I need to get back out there and get some eyes on this situation. Since you so interested, looks like you can handle yourself. You wanna join me? <laughs> yeah, I've heard more than a few hunters say something similar. They nearly all apologize for it later. Gear yourself up however you need to and meet me at the gate. We'll head out from there. Give me some time to get to the gates. I ain't as nimble as I used to be. Alright, you ready to head out there? Well, you certainly brought enough enthusiasm for the both of us. Just stick close to me, keep your head on a swivel, and you'll be fine. We'll be back before you know it. And maybe we'll get some answers. And up there, huh? Space. Must be cool. I never get to go to space. in the depth just doesn't make any sense let's keep going Ashta are clever, but they're usually predictable. These tracks don't follow any of the paths I expect them to. It just doesn't add up. Looks like the tracks head this way. What in the hell? This is one of our security bots. Someone sent this thing out to mimic the Ashton? Why in the world? Shit, you hear that? Eyes up, we got incoming. to handle yourself. Most times someone encounters an ash that they panic. Not you. But now I got even more questions. Who in the hell did this and why? No, I expect not. Someone from Aquila Security did this. We're the only ones that have access to these robots or can change their orders. I need to check this over. See if I can find some more details. But while I do that, I need you to run back to the city. Check the access logs on the computer in the barracks. Look for whoever signed for this thing last. I'll meet you in the city when I'm done here. Ever run into spacers? Bags and scavengers. 
They're like vultures picking away at the leftovers. If it weren't for the walls, the whole town would be an Ashta buffet. Oh, hey there. Back already. Davis said something about you going on patrol with him? He's... <clears throat> He's alright, isn't he? Nothing, uh, bad happened out there. What's that supposed to mean? Okay, okay. Look, people getting hurt was never part of it. Davis has just been so stressed over this whole thing with that woman and her sensors, and it's been affecting him on the job. The damn robot was just supposed to stomp around, mess up her data, and then come back. I didn't know it would rile up the Ashta so much, and it wasn't supposed to break down. It won't matter. I really screwed this up. That robot could have killed people. The robot's internals are fried, so I came up empty. You have any better luck than I did? Know who's responsible? You serious? Oh, Bailey. What were you thinking? My own people sabotaging equipment. Whole world's gone crazy. Well, I'm out to go deal with this. Thanks for helping out. I'll kick some credits your way. May not be much. Not made of money around here. You might want to give Miss Alpin some time to get clean data. Might be a research. Well, it might prove useful. My research could open up more of a keyla to settlement. In time. Hey, how have you been? Staying out of trouble? Didn't I say it was all for a good cause? Things here have been... Well, they're better. The Isis thought a bit between me and Davis. We'll probably never be friends, but at least we're on speaking terms now. I think he finally appreciates the value of my research. I know, I know. I think we both realize that, and we're working on putting it behind us. In fact, speaking of Davis, I have to confess... I'm a little worried about him. In analyzing the recent data, I've isolated readings suggesting that someone is making patrols far more often than in the recent past. I don't have any direct evidence, but I know it's Davis. It's gotta be. I'm worried that everything I've inadvertently put him through is kind of, I don't know, pushed him over the edge, or at least a little too close to it. I have recognized that Davis has an emotional reaction to my presence. We're on speaking terms, but he still gets agitated. I don't want to make things worse. I'm better with statistics and circuits than I am with people. I've already made a mess of this situation. Do you think you could go speak to him? If nothing else, it would ease my conscience. I can't believe Bailey did such a bonehead move. Oh, brother. Why is it every time I see your face, I bet a headache's gonna follow shortly after? Mm-hmm. All broken up about it, I'm sure. So what can I do for you? I don't know whether I should be reassured that someone cares or creeped out that someone's watching me that closely. Ah, that woman, I swear. Even though we've smoothed over most of the rough spots, she still manages to strike a nerve without even trying. No, I know she's not. Might not have believed it when she first showed up in the town, but she's been honest and on the level. When we were out there and we found that robot, obviously that threw me for a loop. Still can't believe one of my own people will pull a stunt like that, endangering us all. But the more I thought about it, that whole episode doesn't account for some of the tracks I saw out there. Too large, too spread out. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. If there's a bigger Ashta out there, something meaner than what we've seen so far, 
I have to know. I tell you what, if you and Kiona are worried, why don't you just come with me then? Either I get an extra gun in a fight, or you get to laugh at the old man and say, I told you so. I give you a chance to gear up if you need it. And uh, maybe grab the biggest gun you got, just in case. All right. You know, Keone showed me her data. She's a clever kid. She's got a lot of things figured out. I think we can make some real improvements in the future. She had a couple sets of data that she thought were erroneous or something. But it seems to me that it might not be. Bigger, faster, Ashta sounds like it matches up with the tracks I've seen. But I tell you, I'm hoping she's right. It's just a glitch. And uh, no need to tell her I said that. Wouldn't want it going to her head. All right, here we are. Let's head. I remember a story from the first time I was here on Aquila. I had totally forgotten about it till recently. Every so often we get independent types who think that they can succeed where everyone else has failed. Some of them stride off into the wilderness, certain that they're going to make more credits than anyone in history. Mining, botany stuff, whatever. Warnings just don't get through to them. Most of them don't come back. But this one time, Miner from some corporation or other, he drags himself back into the city bloody and half dead. Claimed he seen an ash the big as a house out there. The older guys all said he was delirious. And me, well, I was new as anything and just listened to him. Now, though, I'm wondering if maybe it wasn't just blood loss and the heat stroke. Maybe he really did see something. Maybe I should have come out here a long time ago. Shit, that's gotta be it. No matter what happens, you make it back to the city and tell them about this. You hear me? I'm not gonna lie to you. I didn't think we were gonna make it through that. If you hadn't been with me, no way I'd be standing right now. I mean, it does and it doesn't, you know? We got out of lie this one time. That's good. But this ain't gonna be the last time we have to deal with this. Now that we know these things are out here, we need to track them and keep them out of populated areas. And that plan is gonna need everybody. So, I'm gonna swallow my pride a bit here and ask you to go tell Keone what we found. Let her know that her data wasn't an error and that she needs to focus on it. Looks like I can still learn a thing or two. Thanks again for saving my ass. So, what happened? No, he didn't. There's no way Davis would say that, even if it's true. But it is true, isn't it? My data was accurate. You know, I was really hitting a point where I was starting to think maybe this was all a mistake, that I stuck my nose into something I shouldn't have. Davis was so certain they had everything under control that they didn't want or need my help. But they did, didn't they? Don't worry, I am sufficiently humbled. Well, for now. I need to get to work on this immediately. But while I've been sitting around, I whipped up a little something for you. I thought it was funny. <sighs> now that I'm giving it to you, I'm hoping it's not in really poor taste. Anyway, thank you again. Aquila City is Thank really God. I, I thought... Dumb. I thought the Shaw Gang was going to kill all the hostages in the bank. You were amazing. Thank you. We wouldn't have made it without you. 
Listen, I, I have nothing. Less than nothing. My family moved here from Sidonia, hoping for a better life. Sometimes I just feel cursed. And I... I could live with that if it was just me. But Simone? And little Liv? <laughs> I think it's just different flavors of... pain. Sorry, I... Uh, you should feel good. Super good about what you did at Galbank. You want to talk about anything? A man should provide for his family, not drag them down along with him. I've got to do better. We've been given as much charity as I can stomach. Without the low house... I mean, there's something, but it's a hell of a thing to ask. As dark as things are, there are so many good people out there. Simone, my wife, has got a cousin, Milena Exelrod. Truthfully, I never much cared for Milena. But she runs freight, and I know her routes sometimes take her this way. Milena is family. Might be she'd do something for her kin. I'm looking for a job, and I'll do anything. Well, anything legal. Milena's United Colonies, like us, and I know she's got problems of her own with Aquila City. Uh, she clams up the times I've asked. Not even Simone knows. I'm sure she's run afoul of the law somehow. That's kind of how she operates. <sighs> you are an answer to our prayers. Milena called Simone yesterday. I'm pretty sure she's still in the system. Just giving me any hope. It's a lot. Hello, stranger! Oh, I got pirates all over the damn board. Here to join the Good Times Express? doesn't get the juices flowing. You're doing it wrong. <sighs> it's supposed to be safe around here, but Cheyenne has always been just a giant bastard to me. Oh, <clears throat> unless you're a native. In which case, oh my god, I love what you've done with the place. I swear, every time I come through here, something goes to shit. But it always calls me back. Take now. I'm just supposed to be doing some deliveries and whammo! Pirates! Cheyenne's going to get me one of these days. No, not one bit. I enjoy surviving fighting pirates. Big difference. Ha! I knew it! I knew it! Simone should have told me. Her and Marco are so damned proud. I'd love to help them out. Might be I've got a... <laughs> Checkered history with the fine city of Aquila. If you clear up any lingering hard feelings, then I could resume doing business there. I'd set up Stick Up As Us Marco as my official importer. Then wins all around. I used to do cargo hauls for the mayor. 
and he got really upset that I might have been carrying more than I ought to. We had some words, maybe one fat lip, not mine, and now I'm persona non grata. Well, too bad, I see. The trade authorities got a fixer named Tom Starrett. He might be able to facilitate things. Or Mayor Cartwright. God, that windbag. Well, <laughs> if he'd take a sorry, that would work. Fat chance. Either way, I expect credits will be on the line. On the back end, I could afford to give you a taste of the action. Not sure it'll cover the fees. You're brave. I mean, obviously, with all the pew pew out there. Margot doesn't deserve you. But Simone, she's one of the good ones. You squirt things away. Just let Marco know. I used to get really grossed out by blood, but I'm used to it now. Hello there. So good to see you. Milena Axelrod? I wished I'd never heard that name again. She's a menace. She punched me in the face. Can you imagine? Why would you want to let her back here? Yes. Maybe. <sighs> I don't know. I mean, she ran cargo for me for years. I even considered her a friend. But she stabbed me in the back. Well, not literally. But I swore to keep her banned for life. What? Oh, th that's terrible. Listen, I feel for the uh, Jansons. If it was just the fisticuffs, I could look the other way. But we caught her smuggling red-handed. She's been blacklisted for good reason. But, legally, if you pay off a bounty, I can't stop her from coming back. But we'll be watching her. Yes. Honestly, I can't remember exactly what the cargo was. It was years ago. But I do remember getting sucker-punched. I'd like to think that, but... Pretty sure that's all just talk. Yeah, I hope so. I really hope so. I'm glad you understand the position I'm in here. Maybe so. I hear you. I'm still willing to talk. This really is against my better judgment. But fine. She can come back. <sighs> I need a drink. Thank you for saving my husband. Milena contacted me. She's making me her official importer. I'm not sure how much it pays, but I'll take it. You have no idea what you've done. I figured it might be something like that. I'll make sure to keep my distance from any of that. I can't wait to tell Simone. This is the first ray of sunshine we've seen in years. I was so scared. Thanks for taking the time to talk. When you pulled it from the rock, held it in your hands for the first time, how did you feel? No, no, I, I don't think you understand. I know about the visions, the light, and the music. How did you feel inside? What were your thoughts? If we're going to unlock the secrets of these artifacts, we're going to need more than simple empirical data. We'll need to dig deeper. It would be helpful if you'd just tell me how holding the artifact made you feel. Oh my goodness. That must have been... terrifying. When it comes to the artifacts, it never ceases to amaze me how the science... well, simply fails. Honestly, I wasn't sure how you'd react. Some people would consider what you went through a deeply personal experience. Oh, well, uh, I, uh, I enjoy hearing about them. <laughs> Professionally, of course. Either way, um, 
we need all the help we can get. The artifacts are so different, so alien. And I'm certain one of them reached out and spoke to you. Quite the mystery. Well, judging from the fact that both you and Barrett claim to have heard music, I've made the leap that the artifact was reaching out. Music composition might not consist of words and sentences, but I'll be damned if that isn't an attempt at language. Oh, that's an excellent question. You'd think after years of gathering data about the artifacts, I'd have the perfect answer to that. But I haven't the faintest idea. Oh, no, not at all. There's so much going on there, I can't afford to divert all of our resources. But I have classified the artifacts as a priority project. Not much, I'm afraid. All I have to show for my efforts are eyewitness accounts, scores of inconclusive metallurgical test results, and wild theories. Frustrating? No. Bewildering? Yes. It would be... Oh, well, an explorer's dream to solve a mystery like this. I knew I picked the right person for the job. Look, I wanted to thank you for taking the time to talk, and for keeping an open mind. And I also wanted to say, well, I'm pleased we're on this journey together. <laughs> it's the best decision I've made in quite a long time. Time to die. I was dead. Just plain dead. You rangers are something else. I'll do my best. Now, if you don't mind, I need to get back to my route. Remember our last conversation, when you told me the artifacts made you feel like you were being pulled across the entire galaxy? Well, it got me thinking. So I dove into our archives and started looking through Constellation's older journal entries. Just because I wasn't familiar with the experience you described, doesn't mean the same might have been true for my predecessor. Uh, unfortunately, no. Other than you and Barrett, there were no records of direct encounters with the artifacts. I have to admit, though, I did get more than a bit sidetracked reminiscing about old times. Really? I'm surprised that I haven't. After reading those journals, all of the pleasant memories of my time spent with Aja just started flooding back. Aja Mamasa. She was the youngest member of Constellation when it was founded. Only took her 15 years to reach chair. Sorry, I sometimes get so caught up in my own bubble, I forget that I wasn't the first. Ah, oh, she absolutely was. Aja was the one that taught me the ropes at Constellation, and took me under her wing as her protégé. Yeah, I thought so too. That's why I adopted her methods. 
You know, Arja and I logged quite a few interesting discoveries together. But it was the journey itself that I'll never forget. We catalogued unusual stellar phenomena, a few habitable worlds, and some unique life forms, but nothing SSNN would bother to report. Exactly. For me, it was all about the quieter moments. There was nothing quite like sitting back and watching space bend while listening to Arja spin vivid stories to fill the time. Oh, I find that sort of cozy isolation the best way to really get to know someone. Yeah, you know, being alone in interstellar space, nothing but light years of black around you. Some people find that terrifying. I find it... comfortable. It helps me bond with my shipmates. At this point, I'd say you've graduated from protege and moved up the ladder. A bit. You know, all this talk about Arja reminds me that my time with her was a gift. I... miss her dearly. I respected her, and I considered her a dear friend, but we weren't in love. Had that been true, I would have resigned my post and moved to Parima 2 instead of remaining at Constellation. Come to think of it, if we're ever out that far, perhaps we could pay her a visit, and I could make proper introductions. Oh, don't worry. There's no bad blood between us. The worst that might happen is you get stuck listening to two old friends catching up on old times. Well, I don't expect you to be a carbon copy of Arja. Just be yourself. You see, it's clear that we share the same hunger to discover what's out there. And that, well, <laughs> that's what intrigues me about you. Good. Then we're both on the same page. Anyway, that's all I had to discuss for now, so if you'd point the way, we can continue our journey. Nice to see you again. <sighs> Greetings, sir. How may I assist you? Another lost belonging notification in the system. When am I going to find the time? Oh dear, a guest. Dreadfully sorry you had to hear my complaint. How unprofessional of me. Hello, welcome to Paradiso. Dirk Huddleston at your service. Do you need assistance checking in for your reservation? Oh no, no, nonsense. Just a small scheduling issue. Some of our guests have misplaced their belongings, and I am responsible for finding and returning said belongings. Just one of the many services we are happy to provide here at Paradiso. Nothing to worry you about. May I continue to check you in? You're not? Perhaps you'd allow me to persuade you to reconsider? We have the finest amenities within or outside of the settled systems. If you do change your mind, or if you need anything at all, I am here to help. Ah, Parima 2 is owned independently by the Paradiso Group. We exist outside of the United Colonies and Freestar Collective, yet entertain visitors from both. The Paradiso Group is run by several board members, many of whom take residence within the resort itself. They established the resort as a getaway for all on the most beautiful planet in the universe, and I can tell you that there were substantial monetary investments to make sure of that. For one, our hotel rooms are quite luxurious. The executive suite is especially posh, but perpetually booked. However, I must say, even the economy rooms are exceedingly pleasant. You'll find our beach relaxing, and we have several top-notch shops and dining experiences. I particularly enjoy a spot of afternoon tea from Tranquility. Of course, we also have the galaxy's only gourmet chunks. And if you're feeling adventurous, I believe the Enhance is still running a very popular Paradiso getaway special. Broad question, but I'll try my best. Paradiso is the premier resort destination in the known universe. 
This planet is as perfect as one could possibly imagine. That is, assuming pristine beaches, constant beautiful sunny weather, and fabulous resort accommodations are to your liking. Oh no, you're on vacation. I wouldn't dream of asking a guest, or a non-guest as the case may be, to find other guests' lost belongings. But if you want to take a look at the list in the system and you happen to find anything while you're out and about, I suppose it would help me out. Please, don't feel obligated, however. Thank you again for staying with us. There is plenty to see and do around the resort. I hope you'll join us. This is the spot, right here. It's absolutely perfect. I don't think any place could be more perfect. Everything here is a little more expensive than I expected. Guess that's how they get you. I wish I had booked a stay for longer. Surely I can do something for you? Be sure to experience all our resort has to offer. Huh. Well, this is unexpected. You really shouldn't have felt obligated to help. But the truth of the matter is, you've actually saved me a great deal of time and headaches, so I suppose I should give praise where praise is due? So, good. I should probably give you something for your trouble. Thank you, I guess. Bastard's back for round two. What? Who the hell are you? Too bad for me if I was. You don't seem like much of a replacement. Stranded spacers are what passes for tourist attractions these days, huh? I'm Betty, by the way. I'm a bounty hunter. At least I was. Until Lucky Lou here got trashed. Now I'm just your run-of-the-mill dead woman walking. I'm screwed if I can't find a way out of here. If you know anyone who's in the market for a demolitions expert with a happy trigger finger, send them my way. You're standing on her, kid. Lucky Lou's the name of my ship. What do I look like? Your drinking buddy? I'm not gonna spill my guts to a stranger. Some business broke bad, that's all I'm saying about it. Yeah, I'm better off without you anyway. I'm getting pretty desperate here, kid. Look who it is. Did you have a change of heart about leaving me to die in the void of space? I still need a repair kit. Thanks a mil. I'd be space dust without you. Don't have to tell me twice. I'm out of here. Okay. Hello. New customer. Bienvenue. Before you order, I have two simple rules you need to know. Oh, this is my place. That means everyone in here is under my protection. You don't mess with them, they don't mess with you. Blech. If you're buying drinks, you better have cash. Madame Sauvage does not offer credit. Good. Ça c'est bon? Oh, well, thank you very much for the compliment. I'm told my family tree traces itself back to Europe, on Earth. Specifically, the region known as France. A long and proud history, no? 
Finally, someone who listens and does what they're told. A rare commodity in Epsi. I like you already. Hmm. So, what can Madame Sauvage get you? Have you come to try Velocity, perhaps? Or do you prefer something with a little less kick? It's nothing less than heaven in a glass. As though the universe itself was resting her lips on yours. My own personal creation. Do you want information? Go read a book. You want a drink? Talk to Madame Sauvage. That's how things work in my place. Oh, then I must attend to my other customers, Mon Ange. Perhaps we'll speak again. Hmm? Administrator Bayou has forbidden any place other than the Astral Lounge from selling Aurora. Now, if Euphorica wants to sell it in our members' lounge, or Lagrande wants to mix it into Blend, that's their choice. What? I prefer to stay off of Bayou's radar and keep Neon security off my back. Unfortunately, that will have to remain my secret for now. It's safe if the identities of the involved parties remain anonymous. Let's just say I was owed a substantial debt, and the bar was how I got paid, and leave it at that. Mm. On my home planet, we have beautiful beaches. And during certain times of the year, the ocean lights up in beautiful spectrums of color. Now, science will tell you that this is from tiny microscopic organisms that are emitting bioluminescent light. But I believe it's so much more. I think it's a dance, a celebration. It's nature's way of giving thanks to the sun for nourishment. It's breathtaking. That is the essence of velocity. It's a toast to nature and all its splendid wonders. A sudden merger of humankind to the cosmos. <laughs> you got the look of neon on you. I can tell. But don't let the other rats hear you complain about your lot in life. Likely you'll get a bitter shiv in the belly for that. Precious few managed to escape. Either you're lucky as hell, or there's something special about you. Ah, go, eh? Hmm. Competition for a slot there can get bloody. I think it might be more than luck that landed you that. You do things to survive in the gutter. Every now and then, the good bits. A shared meal, a kind gesture. But most of what you do to survive... Well... There's a reason why liquor flows like water on this reef. Looks like you've already done the hard part. You're free of this place. It gives an old gal hope. In time, I doubt anybody would guess in a million years you came from the streets. Now, you're new here, aren't you? Name's Boone Morgan, your new best friend on Neon. If you're here for a drink or listen to the music, I've got you covered. But if you're here for something a little more exciting, we have plenty of Aurora for sale. Not at the Astral Lounge, my friend. In fact, this is the only place authorized to sell Aurora by order of Administrator Bayou himself. And once you buy it, you can use it anywhere in the Neon that you'd like. Well, except the spaceport, of course. Oh, no, 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 no. Drugs are for street gangs and junkies. Aurora is on an entirely different level. I like to call it an exquisitely crafted transcendent experience. <laughs> Only problem is that won't fit on the package. Here, we'll take a look at the menu. Now, I'm not going to lie, the Aurora is a bit expensive, but <laughs> let's face it, can you really put a price on pleasure? Oh, Ben and I are good friends. <laughs> he personally gave me the job here at the Astral Lounge. Oh, he's a good man. Cares a lot about the citizens of Neon, making sure they're all employed and well taken care of. A real humanitarian. Pretty amazing, isn't it? That's Borealis, only 19 years old, and yet she produces some of the most heart pounding, trippiest electronic music you've ever heard. I don't know where she gets her inspiration, but I'm betting all that free Aurora she gets has something to do with it. That depends on if you're hungry or thirsty. Of course, of course. Excellent choice. The Sky Suite offers luxury and sophistication you won't find anywhere else in the settled systems. 
and since you'll be living in the same tower as the Astral Lounge, all of its pleasures and pageantry are only an elevator away. Of course, the Sky Suite features an open design with an emphasis on luxury. Whether you prefer the morning sky or a neon sunrise, the high ceilings and wall-sized windows will give you a full view of the city's splendor. How unfortunate, but I will be here should you change your mind. Hope to see you again. This Aurora stuff. Excuse me? If it isn't our very own Apex Predator, Ready to collect some more samples for me? Good, good. I know just the species. Uh, let me get you that info. Here. That's where you're headed. Take care of yourself out there. the samples then consider your credits transferred thank you for the assistance captain hey what can i do for you if it isn't our very own apex predator ready to collect some more samples for me good i had a species i was hoping to get under the scope just let me get the specifics for you here your creatures are on that one. Don't let them get the best of you, all right?
got the samples? Then consider your credits transferred. Thank you for the assistance, Captain. My husband runs one of the most successful businesses in the Freestar Collective. But I still think we can do better. Weston needs to get his brother focused on food production instead of wasting time brewing beer. If I ran things, we wouldn't have this problem. And try to come between Weston and his brother? They'd never allow it. Oh, I've tried to drop hints and make suggestions, but it all falls on deaf ears. I don't mean to sound ungrateful, of course. The company's healthy and Weston and I live well enough. I just, I'd like to help, you know? I'd like to be a part of things instead of feeling like I'm playing second fiddle. I suppose I should just accept my lot and try to find peace with it. Well, no, not as such. I mean, the business is doing just fine, but it could be doing even better. Those knuckleheads have so much God-given talent, and I just wish they used it better. Well, there is. <sighs> the stakes are huge. With further R&D on Intelluit, the entire settled systems could benefit. Surely that's worth some less than savory solutions. Right now, it's tailored to Aquila's biomes, allowing wheat to flourish in places it normally couldn't. But if Henry applied himself, who knows where else we could grow in Teluit? He may be frustrating, but Henry's the smartest person I've ever met. Just don't tell him that. That's reasonable. Henry's pet project is tied to market perception. His beer, annoyingly, is really good. But if we could make a bad batch, terrible, really, his margins are tight enough he might be forced to throw in the towel. Henry bores everyone to tears about how crafting beer is so much more art than science. It's delicate. Surely it wouldn't be too hard to mess it up, right? My husband put his foot down and hasn't risked our core business on this. If Henry loses money here, it'll only be from his pet project. The next big batch of beer is almost done brewing in our factory. You just need to find a way to break in without getting caught by the guard and tamper with it somehow. Then just wait a day or so and see how the batch goes over at the Stone Root Inn. Do that and I'll pay you handsomely. That's the last I'll talk of this. We need to be Oh, I'm sorry. We'll go. We'll go. Just need to find a time. Neon? They're barely a part of the Freestar Collective. Kate, hold up! So, Henry's new batch. How'd it go over? I know you like Henry, but... What? There's something wrong? Sam said it tasted off. Really off. Gladys said it was fine. Then she dumped her whole glass on the floor when she thought I wasn't looking. No, oh, no. I don't think we should carry Henry's stuff anymore. Our regulars have stopped ordering his old stuff, too. Uh, I'll break the news to Henry. Feel for the folk in the stretch. I really don't understand why Weston can't rein in his brother a little. How much are we going to lose on this brewing nonsense? We only use robots for farming. Surely some of that tech we could patent. Something happened to Henry's beer? That's terrible. So terrible. But I'm sure I know nothing about it. Here's some credits for delivering the news. Thanks. 
suspect that's the last I'll be seeing of you. A lot of famous people visit Akiwa. Looks like you flushed out another crime boss with all your carrying on. Lord knows there's a fertile supply of them. Care to cash in a hefty sized reward again? <laughs> Here are the details. I have a feeling crossing you will be their last mistake. Good luck. Sarah Filburn and her brother-in-law Henry?
Might be hard work, but it sure beats living under the boot. These rangers are some hard-blooded folk. More missions on the board. They never, ever end. You are a machine is what you are. Well, criminals beware. The reward, all yours. spacer I've seen before. If you're with Liss, then I'm the Keeper of the Enlightened. It actually worked. I was wondering if I was just yelling into the void. That message was mine, all right. Easy there. But you came here. What, to help? Looking for some sort of reward? I don't know what game you're playing, but I guess I'm in. Used to be four families that List helped set up stakes in this system. We rarely saw eye to eye in the best of times, and believe me true, these ain't the best of times. Spacers started raiding and it's been getting worse. Only a matter of time before they end us all. <laughs> Unless you're willing to help some hard-working, pig-headed settlers out. The League of Independent Settlers. Good meaning fools happy to set colonists up in independent space. The promise is freedom. True freedom. If you can fend off all the spacers and pirates, the settled systems can throw at you. The winds and the banners are farmers like me. Jacqueline the mare and her daughter have some mining operation with dreams of hitting it big. I've tried in the past to get us to work together, but you don't join list unless you have a healthy dollop of obstinacy. No arguments here. The Spacers have taken out the family's list satellites, so we can't even talk to each other. Isolate and eliminate a classic tale. You fix the Lopez satellite, and I'll open a secure channel, and we can sync up and get the lay of the land, and then get all of our satellites operational. List set us up with some secure communication satellites. Makes it hard for Riff Raff to pick us up. Well, in theory. The other families won't respond to communications on open channels. I figure if I didn't risk the distress call, we're all dead anyway. I have. Twice. I took out the old pickup. Last time I tried, I barely made it out alive. They're using the damn satellites as bait. My ship just isn't up for facing spacers. But yours? A whole different animal. It might be I'm getting caught up in the moment. But I actually feel <laughs> optimistic for once. Thanks. Oh, what have we here? is up. Sending the data on the other satellites. 
You do hear me, right? Hello? Wait, what? Oh, hardy ha ha. It's gonna take some time dealing with someone competent. I don't suppose you want a job working hydroponics. No one ever says yes to that. <laughs> Once you repair the other satellites, I'll open a channel to the other families.
Jesus is our savior, huh? Figured you'd need someone else to do something useful. Charming as ever. First things first, I'm pretty sure the spacers got the winds. No contact with them. All of them? My god. Shit. They were good people. They died. Hades. Because we couldn't get our act together. That's rich coming from you. You've scammed me time and time again, Albin. The spacers are a threat to us all, Jackie. And that, that is the salient point. Mistakes were made, we need to get past that. What I'm proposing is a mutual defense pact, nothing else. Each of us throws in our ships, men, materials, and whatnot, enough to protect all of our asses. I wouldn't give you one solitary ounce of Helium-3 if my life depended on it. The problem is, it does. I think we all need to cool off. Stranger, a word? First things first. You did an honest day's work, you deserve an honest day's pay. Here. With heartfelt compliments. But I expect you know what's coming next. We're not military folk, and I'm not ashamed to say we are out of our depth. I'll pay you more, much more. If you can help kick the spacers out of our system for good. And coordinate our efforts to do so. <laughs> you, you are something else. So we're not babes in the woods. Each family has a ship or two and hard men and women that can handle themselves in a firefight. But the root of the problem is, admittedly, a self-inflicted injury. My family was here first. And when Liz sent other families here, perhaps I didn't take to it kindly. Might be I made an odd credit here or there at their expense. Something Lemaire especially has never let me live down. But now we need the Lemaires and the Bandas both, I reckon. Listen, I'm not proud of what I did. But this was my system first. Then Jackie comes lately, arrives, and maybe it rubbed me wrong. But it's ancient history. We gotta evolve or war just fuel for the spacers. I wouldn't hold my breath with Jackie. But Band is good folk. Well, hopefully. We need to cooperate now, but also in the future. We need a mutual defense pact. As our new mercenary commander, please talk with Band and Lemaire. Lemaire, God help us, especially we could use. The family's got the most ships and crew by far, but if she's a lost cause, Ben and I can muddle through. Just so you know, Albin is a con man and a thief. Associating with the likes of him reflects poorly on your character. When my crew first arrived, Albin was all charm and eager to deal. It seemed like the start of a fruitful relationship. But quickly it became clear that he was grifting us. Machines we bought broke down, shipments he hauled for us went missing, and help he promised never materialized. I swore I'd never work with him again. Oh, he's lucky I'm not a vengeful woman. Don't be so certain. So here's the deal. Odds are good my crew can hold out against the spacers all by ourselves. If we're gonna band together, I have the most to contribute and the most to lose. The smart play for my interests is the Lemaire's hunker down and outlast the storm. You think that would cover it? My whole family almost died because of him. Five times that much. Final offer. And if you think Albin can repay you, you're dreaming. You... Fine. I'll take the credits. The Lemaire's are in your defense pact. Now it's time for you to do your job and see we survive this fiasco. We band together. Not only can we deal with the current problem... Hello, stranger. Your work in getting the satellites up? You've done us a good turn. I know it was paying work, but a lot of mercs wouldn't even take a list contract. You here to talk about the defense pack? List is long on ideals but short on credits and, well, 
sense. Don't get me wrong, they've got the best of intentions, but intentions alone aren't enough. I figured he might. I mean, I agree that right now coming together makes sense, but going forward, it's hard to imagine Jackie and Alvin working together for the long haul without one winding up with a knife in the back. If you can get those stubborn mules to work together, really together, they might be able to see the sense of this defense pack going forward. Not much of a choice, really. Well, the bandits will join the defense pack. We got one ship operational, another we can patch up. It's not much, but you'll have us when you need us. So is the defense packed in business? Come on, don't keep me in suspense. Well, she has every right to hold a grudge. But she's joining us anyway? How in the hell did you manage that? I guess there's no need to know how the sausage gets made this time. So, the sensors have picked up two contact groups, undoubtedly our spacer friends. We don't have many ships, but we can send them with you, or hold them in reserves your call. Expect more than you encountered at the satellites. How much more? Hard to say at this distance. You are a wonder to behold. After you deal with the spacers, meet back on my farm. I've got an idea how to find where the spacers are based. satellites to triangulate some spacer's chatter. 
You did what? I'm more than just a pretty face. Anyway, there's an old derelict star station the spacers are using as a base. I mean, there's a real outside chance there's a relay or something there, but these spacers aren't the most savvy of customers. I'm telling you, that's where they're holed up. Couldn't say it better myself. There are undoubtedly a lot of spacers there, both ships and men on the station itself. We need to excise this cancer from our system. Every last one of them. 100% agree. So, oh glorious leader, any words of wisdom or inspiration before we embark? So caution's the word of the day. Got it. We need to bring everything we got to bear. There won't be any do-overs on this one. We'll all be waiting for you to jump in.
This? This is the first deep breath I've taken in months. I make no illusions. You did this. And now it's up to us to keep it going. Very diplomatic. It's horseshit, of course. But it sounded nice. The rest of the families and I, well, uh, we chipped in for a reward. I know it's probably a pittance compared to what someone like you makes, but uh, we're just dirt poor farmers and miners just trying to get by. I think I need to shut up now. Don't want to get... Who the hell knows? We're coming off a victory, so that might buy us a honeymoon period. But maybe, maybe it'll last. Damn you. I, I'm not, yeah, deep breath. If you ever are in this system, you come back and visit. We'll give you a warm welcome for the ages. I guess this defense pact is now a thing. Now that was a hell of a thing. <laughs>